Hey guys, and welcome to Talking Pop Culture. This is a new podcast I'm starting on Twitch. Hope you guys are. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. As for the first part, and hope you guys enjoy this podcast I start doing. And uh, just enjoy it, or just have a quick listen. Whatever you want to talk about. Today's goals. Uh, this is a podcast I'm gonna be doing. Maybe Thursday. I'm not have a official schedule. I'm gonna try to do it once a week. It might not be the same day a week. I would like to have it as a consistent schedule, but as of right now. Don't know, stuff goes on, stuff happens, maybe it doesn't happen. I also wanted to do my other streaming of games and stuff I do in the night. So once a week, I'm going to kind of scream, this is a nice like, movie off the table because of movies and other things that goes on. But, yeah, so today on the podcast, uh, this is going to be anything, this podcast is about anything pop culture. So it can be anything from comics, video games, toys, cartoons, anime, manga, comics, everything. And the first one I want to talk about some comic book stuff. Figure out a topic or something to talk about, and I have a, and we're talking about making our own Justice League, Justice Leagues, because I kind of had I have two. If one is not long enough, or if again, or if I feel like it, if you go talk about it and I need a little more, I have two technically Justice Leagues. But before that, we're gonna talk about uh, before we get into the whole Justice League thing. That's the big, big thing of this. We're gonna talk about the Joker teaser trailer, which just dropped, and I feel like I have to talk about it now because I don't know when else I'm gonna talk about it. It is cool. It is, looks cool, amazing, anything you I would expect from uh, a Joker movie. Because doing a Joker movie is kind of weird. This is one of the first, like, movies that's doing of a villain. Of a straight-up villain. I think that's interesting to do a movie just based on a villain. I think that's very interesting. I think if you're going to do one, you got to go big, go home, you're going to do the Joker. I know they're talking about doing a Black Adam movie at some point. I'm excited to see what that looks like. But this movie is by uh, the Joker, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Who looks amazing as Joker. He plays him perfectly in my opinion. From what I've seen in the trailer. He definitely got the Joker down. It looks like they're going based off Killing Joke. Uh, because there's a girl you see him dancing with. Taking a, giving a bath stuff. I'm assuming that's his wife. In the bath scene maybe because she's pregnant. That could be. Uh, I know she dies with having with the baby and stuff. And, he, and he, I, I know in that he also was like a comedian and stuff. Da, da, da. And then he eventually gets on a heist. You know like does a heist or something. Uh, these guys, like, kind of force him into a heist, and maybe that's what happens. Like, maybe that is actually what happens. Like, he gets into a heist, he can do some, do some heist stuff, they, he dies, they, then stuff happens, and eventually he gets into the heist thing, they go to the guys, and something happens, maybe it becomes the Joker. I don't know if it's gonna be, like, he gets dumped in acid and all that stuff, or whatever, and becomes Joker that way, he might just be worth the makeup and stuff. But either way, it looks cool, uh, it looks creepy as well, I think it's cool, because I think this is something you need to look creepy, cool, everything in between. Uh, DC, I think DC is doing, you know, smart by doing it, making it, because it also feels like it's gonna be some standalone thing, it's not gonna tie into any of the other movies. What I think, my thing with that is like, ah, uh, that's an interesting, you don't need to tie in all the movies, I think that could be a better idea. You just make a bunch of standalone movies like great, and have if you want to have other ones tie in great. But I like the idea of you can make a movie that doesn't tie into anything, and that's kind of cool because movies don't need to. I know Marvel does very successfully with the tying into movie things, but I think DC doesn't have to do that with all the movies. They don't have to all tie in. Having some great standalone movies, if they all if they did standalone movies and they were all just really great up to like this quality, also they look really cool. It's coming out this week, and that looks amazing as well. That one has a little bit of tied into it, but they look great. Aquaman's also was great. I did see that. That was great. And one of them's been great. So those are some of the best examples of DC doing stuff right and great and the ones that I really almost can agree on that were good. Some like Justice League are kind of, and Bad Movie and some, it's like those and Suicide Squad. Some people like them, some people don't. It's like, whatever. But, I mean, I've liked all of them, but basically the ones I said before were the better ones, like Aquaman, Flat, Aquaman and Wonder Woman, uh, Sam looks really good, and Joker, they all look like they're going in a new direction. Also, we're going to have a birthday, the other one that I know, the certain that we know might be coming out, Birds of Prey, because there's a little tease thing for it, so that's the only one that might be coming out. I'm excited for that as well, but the Joker looks cool. I, did, I don't know if it's going to be R or going to be PG-18 yet. I, I'm assuming they're going to go PG-13, because that's something more people would see it that way. But I can see him doing all, because Joker is very, it can be dark and disturbing. The trailer made it, didn't, they didn't give a rating yet, because obviously the movie's probably not done yet, so they can't really give a rating yet, because the movie's probably still, uh, probably is in production, or at least editing phase right now, it's coming out in all October this year, but pretty soon, but DC needs to, I think, they, at least they need to make one movie a year, at least, they need to have at least one movie come out a year, and if, you only, if they only have one or two a year, like, Marvel is free, but they always has qual the Marvel quality, see what quality on them, DC needs to make one or two a year, and they need to just make them best, they don't need to make like three or four, because how do you need to make one or two movies, and they gotta be fucking great. 
Because you have great movies that will last longer than just okay or maybe bad movies. But I think Joker is going to be on the end of... It's going to be one of the best Batman-related movies. And it's not even featured Batman, so that's kind of funny. But it's cool. Uh, I think it's going to be a great movie. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm excited to see if it's going to be R-rated or not. And also, something else I just thought about that I'm going to talk about here. Really quickly, I heard that New Mutants is more, is going to release that. So I'm excited to see that. Because that looks like horror... And it's great. I love horror movies, and that looks just great, like a superhero kind of horror thing. New Mutants is an interesting one, but I, from what I've known of the comic, that might be some stuff. It, it things are going based off of such an arc or something. I don't know. It looks really cool, and I'm excited. I'm glad they're actually releasing that, because that looks always. I thought that looks really cool, so I'm excited for that. And yeah, so I want to talk about that quickly. That looks just cool that they're releasing that in the cool horror thing. That came out, the, the trailer for that came out so long ago. It was like, it's going to be out right now. You did that so long ago, the one trailer. And yeah, but uh, I think it's uh, it's probably done, and by this point it's gotta be done. By that, it's only had a trailer, and they're just waiting for when they're gonna release it. But I uh, yeah, I think you should because people walked on that, so I think you should release it at some point. But um, oh yeah, so now uh, I think we're pretty good talking about the Joker. Just a quick synopsis on what I think of the Joker. And look, it looks awesome. It's great, and that new mutant thing that's coming out at some point. This season is coming out, so I'm excited for that as well. Uh, now we're gonna jump into the topic of today. A podcast. Sometimes it might be just news stuff if I want to talk. There's a bunch of news stuff. Like, obviously, Comic Cons and stuff usually have a bunch of news stuff. So maybe for those, I'll do special ones for those. But they were talking about uh, making our own Justice League. Making my own Justice League or our own Justice League. Uh, obviously, there's going to be input. I don't think anybody's. Two people watching, and since I have it on, I do have. I obviously have that Twitch up here on this computer. I think for it's around. I, I don't know if I need it. To be up, but it's up, and it's on also that computer, so that's probably why there's that two people viewing. I mean, I could be watching, but whatever the case may be, uh, we're going to be talking about making our own Justice League, and I want to talk about, stress before that, the Justice League books that are up now, and about my book would be alongside these books. So it wouldn't be like, oh, I'm making my own new Justice League, and it's getting rid of one of their books that's doing my... It's alongside what's going on right now with Justice League, and all the characters in the Justice League books. We're going to boost talk about them, and that kind of stuff first, so you can get an idea of these are the characters I didn't really want to use. A couple examples, like if I wanted to use Batman as like a leader or somebody. Great. Didn't really work for either of my teams. <laughs> one does have a Batman, but not the one you think it is. But, uh, we're going to talk about the books that are now at Justice League. The main Justice League book is by Scott Snyder. And I'm not going to say the artist because it has different artists. I don't know the artist for any of these books, so I'm not going to... I know some of the artists for Justice League, and uh, but Justice League had changed his artists, so I'm not going to 100% say. Like, it's by um who the artists are because it changes, and I'm, I'm not really good... Don't, the names I can't, like, just bring out without saying I'm wrong, so I'm not going to. But there's a bunch of great artists. Uh, I wanted to say that Scott Snyder's writing it. Also, James Tan, the Force, has written a couple of issues. He's written, he's written the Legion of Doom issues, I know that. And I think he wrote a couple issues I know of that had to do with the, uh, Drowned Earth thing. I think he wrote a couple of those. But he's helped with the series. So it's not just Scott Snyder, it's him and James Tan, the Force, who's also writing Justice League Dark. We'll talk about that in a minute. Because Scott Snyder's Justice League is basically about Justice League taking on this big thing. It's like, he wants to make a big bombastic is what he is. I think that works very well. Big, bombastic Justice League team where he takes on, like, they're trying to fix the source wall and the totality. They're doing all kinds of, like, god-level, like, doing the big stuff. Like, Galactus is coming to destroy your planet. Big shit. And I kind of like that they're going big. And not every issue is super amazing big. Like, one was Superman, an issue, a single issue was Superman. It's like, fix the moon because it gets destroyed or something. And he fixes it. That's why I think it's good, good, cool. And they also do, like, obviously they suggest they do more stuff as well, but mostly this series is most focused on doing the big stuff, and not just anything, but I think that's cool. And the team is made up of, so, uh, it's made up of Superman, uh, we have Batman, Bruce Wayne, obviously, uh, we have Wonder Woman, obviously, but he's also on Justice League Dark, so he's kind of on two teams. So that's why characters like that so kind of could be on both teams. I decided I could do that if I wanted to, but none turned out to be that way. We also have just Flash, Wally West, uh, no, not Wally West, uh, Barry Allen, well, a Flash. Uh, we have Green Lantern, who is John Stewart, obviously, like from the show, the cartoon series. We also have Hawk Girl, um, and then we have uh, Marshall Van Hunter, basically like the show. We also have Aquaman. Uh, right now, I think it's male because Aquaman is kind of gone. He's kind of like, you know what I mean? After uh, John Darcy, kind of, he's not doing his own thing in his book, or kind of like he's kind of like gone, or I think he's gone or something. I don't know what the other males on the team said, but now for Aquaman, so you could say her and Aquaman. Um, but since Aquaman's kind of doing his own thing, I tried to keep this to these characters. I tried to put characters who weren't really doing anything, or didn't have their own box or stuff that it could work. You know what I mean? It actually worked. 
So that's the main Justice League theme, and it's been great because I'm not threading it right now. We're at the point where he's doing stuff with Mr. Mr. Pizzlelick. What is awesome because he's getting Duncan these dudes and seeing him against the Justice League because I mean, we've never seen because we've seen him against Superman all the time. Maybe like that, man, one other character once in a while, but that, I think that was really cool. And also, we're gonna get I know Batmite in this, so yes, I'm excited for that. But um, yeah, so that's it for Justice League, so that's for the main Justice League book. And then we have Justice League Dark, but like I said already has Wonder Woman on it, she's on this team. See, so it kind of has to do with the Amazonians and stuff, but kind of, you could say, magic or god stuff. So I kind of see, he does fit at all the Justice League members. I think he is the most uh, magic, closest to magic when it comes to the teams. So he's going to be the one put the figure on that book, because it's like, oh, the guy whose weakness is magic. That's your weakness, magic. I don't know how that works, but yeah, cool. Uh, we also have on this team, um, Zatanna, obviously, magician, great character. I love Zatanna, he's great. Obviously, that makes sense. Uh, we have Swamp Thing kind of on the team, so that's another one who makes pretty sense. He's, he seems to be always around, kind of on the team, so that's kind of another character. He's always been kind of part of Justice League Dark, so that makes sense. Constantine, who is kind of like, technically kind of on the team, he's kind of on the team, because he's been, throughout the book, he's been almost in every issue, but he's kind of like a side character, kind of like a side member, kind of like he's kind of there at a the point, he kind of got onto it. Now he got trapped uh, with Dr. Fate, uh, with I think the Spectre or something, so yeah. He is kind of on trap right now, but he will come back. And they're not going to kill off Constantine, obviously. I doubt they're going to kill off Constantine. And if they do, they're not going to definitely gonna bring him back. But so we have him. He's kind of gone right now, but he's still technically part of the book. And he'd be gone anyway, so I wouldn't want to... Like, if he's a character like that, like, how yeah, he's gone in the comics, I'm not going to use him because he's gone. Uh, we also have... Who else on the team? Detective Chimp, another interesting one. Who is technically a magic character, even though technically he doesn't really have much, you could say... He counts a magic character. He kind of, I would say, counts. Uh, he has the Night Master Sword because he now has the Night Master Sword, but definitely magic. And because he died during Dark Knight's Metal, it's kind of sad because he's a cool character. I liked him, and he didn't get to see much. It was like, oh, no, he died. Now Dr. Shim took over, and now he's helping running the bar, the Blue Moon Bar, and helping protect Flutterwood, uh, who blew uh, Devil, who's not a part of the team, but he's kind of, I guess, he's not here, but he's guarding the realm with the Night Master to protect the kind of cool. And the only other member on the team I think we have is, uh, Man Bat. It was actually kind of cool to have a villain. A villain be a, I like the idea of villains becoming heroes. Like, certain villains I think can pull it off. Man Bat seems to be one of them. Uh, same with, I'm gonna say, uh, why do these look crooked? You look crooked. Like, you need to be, yeah. Um, Man is cool, because he's a character who is interesting. Uh, Kurt Langstrom is his name. It's kind of cool. I wasn't expecting that. When I got this book, I wasn't expecting him to be on the team. I was like, oh, he's kind of cool. And I like that. All the other characters knew a little about, but I didn't know he became like somewhat of a hero after some stuff. So that's kind of cool. He's actually cool. And I think that's basically about the team. There's other magic characters in the book, throughout the book. There's all kinds of, all the other magic characters. Uh, I gotta say with Deadman in the book. Is Deadman a part of the team? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Deadman might be a part of the team. Why? Well, I've been reading the original Jesse Dark by uh, uh, Jeff Lemire and... Uh, David, Day D, Day and Matthias, or whatever his name is, Matthias. So I mean, the original Justice League Doc book for the new fifty two. So I'm counting that one getting this next up. I'm trying to remember who's in the book. If we had G the dead man on the book, do you think he would be? I thought they had a whole thing with that. Or was that the? I thought they went to Nanda Parbat, didn't they? And they stopped the. I think the dead man might be in it. If he is, cool. If he's not, whatever. I can't remember for some reason. I don't know why. But he's also, I think, in the book at least somewhere. But yeah, the book is great, and Jesse Dark is by obviously James Hunter Force, really great. I've been enjoying James Hunter Force and her stuff. It's just been really fun, really bit enjoying the book. It's been a hell of a good time, in my opinion. I think everybody should go check it out. I think it's, in my opinion, I actually like it a little more than Justice League. I think Justice League is cool, and a couple things it does to sell more. It comes out more often. Uh, it's just a big scope book. I think it's great. If you want your regular Justice League book, it's fine. It's great. I think it's on um, Paul, just as you talk like a little more, because like a lot of the magic and a lot of characters a little bit more. But I like Justice League, like it's right on the Justice League doc for me. It's like it's just a good book. It's been such a good book. Now the last Justice League book, there's actually a few Justice League books out right now. Justice League Odyssey. What to my knowledge, I have not been reading. So if I don't, I know a little bit of like kind of like who the team is and I, a little bit about us. I don't know too much. So if I get anything wrong, I'm sorry. Not reading that. I can't read everything, and I don't have the money to read everything, and I don't. You're not going to buy every single book. But I will probably read it at some point if it comes in, probably at some point. But Justice League Dark, I know, has on the team, we have Cyborgs on the team, uh, Jessica Cruz, uh, Green Lantern, Twin Starfire is on the team, 
uh, what's his name? He starts with an A. The Batman guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Adriel. Ad Adriel? Adriel. Adriel, you know, you, you know, I'm talking about the guy. It's red. Adriel, I'm saying his name, I feel like I'm saying it just a tad off, like, Ad Ad if I saw the name, I would see it, I, I know the name, it's like my name, it's like, I can picture it kind of, like, in my mind, just, it won't come out. Adriel, 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 the guy with the sword, flaming sword, you know, from Batman, who used to be, he was Batman for a little bit, then he became his own character, as, as, as Giselle, you know what I'm talking about, but, um, him, and then I kind of think who else was on the team, I think, Dark Side, maybe, I, I remember him being on some of the covers, I don't remember if he was a team member, or what the deal with that is, but, um, so that's the team I know, there might be some more, I think that might be it, but they seem to be doing space stuff, so they're like, a space just to speak to my knowledge. Space, but most of those that makes kind of so much sense. I'm actually somewhat curious now to what I kind of I might need to look up what the books about and see if I missed any characters after the stream. I'm not gonna look it up now. I mean, I could, but we're not gonna do that right now. We're just gonna are uh, you that's basically enough. I know most of the people on the team, other than Dark Side, I don't know if he's a follow team or he's like the enemy or the big guy, bag or whatever. They seem to be doing more space stuff to my knowledge. They might not be, but it looks like the first arc they had more maybe a space team too. I don't know. But that's that, and I don't know who's writing that, I'm sorry, I don't know who's writing that or drawing that. But that looks looks cool, and it looks good, I, I've heard people enjoying it, so, I know some people enjoy it, so. Cool book, um, that's probably the weirdest Jets League team, it's like Jets League Odyssey, but the weird Jets League book. I kinda like the idea of it being weird and has a few characters, some not characters you would ever expect to be in a Jets League. So I do applaud it for having some weird choice, which as the Jets League team, it is a weird choice, some weird characters, but I do think it's, it's cool. Type of weird jet sleep book like that, but we will get the weird jet sleep books. Uh -huh, oh, we're messing my team. Um, but yeah, so those are the books that are going on right now. I decided I didn't want to use any characters who were previous, who are in the jet sleep book right now, who are like the, who are the main part of the main team. Like, because in jet sleep, you see characters like in the background helping out with certain things. But it's like in the beginning of the first issue, it's just like them tackling a bunch of like things that are going on throughout the world. And they have like you see like Star Girl in the background, or like Animal Man, or Adam Strange in the background, or Swamp Thing, other characters. You know, in the background helping them. And then there's the scene where they sell, like, a cafeteria and you see all these superheroes and stuff. So there's other people who, oh, you see other characters in, like, certain areas after a big thing happens. They all gathered. It's like, you see other characters there. Like, in the place of the Hall of Justice. So they all seem to be, all the superheroes all allowed seem to go there. So there. So there's, all, so there's other heroes and some who are on some of my teams. At least one or two of them. So yeah. But, so they all technically in books, but they're not, like, the main team, like, if we say, you have to say, this is the main team, this is the main team, this is the main team, they're not on, and here, the main teams are, like, backups of the board, the lead members, so, yeah, so that was really quick, and I didn't want to take anybody, if they had something specific going on in comics, like, they are gone, or not around, or they have a specific reason they're not around, or gone, or doing the only thing, but I really can't take them away from that, I decided, for the most part, we're gonna just... Boom, boom, and other than one or two, I gave kind of a point on the list because I thought it'd be interesting. So yeah, so let's dig into the Justice League I created. What I have on my phone, I made a list. I'm just, I made two teams. I then I had an idea for a team, and then I became something else because I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea for a team as well. So we have two teams. So I decided first off, yeah, uh, this is the second team I started off of because I put one character on the list or two, and then I was like, oh, why don't we do this? Fifth book, and I don't know if we get through both of them, but it's Justice League. The book is called Justice League Time. Justice League, something. Justice League Time. And it's a book about a Justice League that has to deal with time problem issues. Like, it's a time traveling book. Kind of like a Booster Gold book, although it's small. But a Justice League book about a team who has to go and stop, you know, save the world, but has to do it. Like, a, it's like a. Has to save. Time, like have to go through time and stop villains. Uh, cause there are tons of time traveling villains and stuff in comics, so it's very easy. Or go back and stuff happens, and you have to go back and change stuff or do stuff. It, it I think, it would be a cool book, and I think we should eventually at some point get that. Cause as, as the two books I got, that one is way more likely to happen than the other one. The other one's just a fun book I wanted, I would do. Uh, but yeah, gently time, get a bunch of characters to go and uh, traveling through time. And traveling through time or doing stuff, going to the future, past, whatever, doing whatever to stop the bad guy. And they can also be in the present to do something in the present, whatever. But I wanted to go for my list, obviously. And we're going to go through the characters now because that helps explain the team and how it works and da da da. 
First member for the team is obviously Booster Gold. Doing a time travel with Jet to Sleepbook, I thought Booster Gold would be a cool character to be on the team. He knows the most about time travel. I, I was thinking he could probably, of uh, the characters I have, I think he would be a cool character to have as the leader of the team because he is, because he knows more about time and all this stuff than anybody else on the team. He, if you've been reading DC Comics, he did that thing uh, for Superman. He tried to stop him from going back in time. The whole thing with him and him going back in time and going to the future where he meets Bomb. And they also beat Rogo, was it, uh, Zod and all that stuff. They did a thing there. They also did a thing in Batman with him going to Pat Quinn to give him a present or whatever. The wedding or whatever. Excuse me. And that was something else I thought was pretty cool. And they've used him a couple of other times and stuff. It's just really cool. I was like, he, he knows the most about time. Even though a couple of these characters, at least one of these characters, I would say... One of the characters maybe outranks him a little bit as a leader, but I do think he is qualified. He's been a part of the Justice League. Uh, he was part of Justice League International for the New 52 when that came out. When New 52 came out, they wrote the book of Justice League International. He was basically leading that. He was like second in command. Batman was like number one, but Batman was like kind of like, Boots of Gold, you're like kind of like the leader. So that's kind of cool. So he has been a leader. And he was in the original Justice League, uh, Justice League International or Justice League book. So it's kind of like, yeah, it makes sense. He was in the original Justice League book in the 90 by Keith Griffin and. Yeah, so it makes sense for him to be, I thought, like, he's been in Justice League more than enough times, he deserves to be on the list, and if you're doing a time-traveling Justice League book, I think he's the perfect candidate, and he doesn't have his own book right now, there's nothing really going on too much with him, other than Heroes in Crisis, and I totally forgot he was in Heroes in Crisis, kind of, oh, I don't know how that's going to end, so I don't think that, but still, he, I mean, even in the future, it could happen, in, I, this also could happen, in, this is a time-travel book, so it could happen whenever, so it could happen before Heroes in Crisis for all we know, because, you know, by the time he comes back, up, oh, Heroes in Crisis, but in the series, he comes back, it's Heroes in Crisis time. But that's going to end in two issues, so two or three issues, I'm not really too worried about that, but he's obviously the best qualified. Now, when I was going through picking out people for the team, I was thinking of who to be on the team, and I was looking through my boxes, and a couple characters stood out to me um, that I thought would be interesting, and I made a list of characters, and then I just chopped it down, and some of the characters moved to the other list, some of the characters just, I made a list of characters, these are all the characters, I'm thinking about putting on the team, and these are the ones I want for sure on the team. So I shrunk the list down. It was like 10. I shrunk it down to like, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's like 7 characters right now. It had with 10. I dropped down to, uh, it was 10 or so. I think it was 10. And I dropped down to 7. Uh, Booth the for the first one. I was like, this is going to be a time one that makes sense. I was thinking of who do I want? Who's in, who's would make a good choice? And I was thinking of, we have, uh, next we'll talk about, the next person I put on the list was a green, I was thinking of Green Lantern, because Green Lantern always seems to be a Green Lantern on the team, no matter what book you do, but the most, but that always, but I thought, like, uh, what's the deal with Green Lantern, what's going on, so we know, uh, obviously we can't use Jessica Cruz, because he's in her own book, uh, Jesse Garcia, and John Stewart in Green Lantern, uh, the regular Jesse Lee book, Hal seems to be doing his own thing with the, his Green Lantern book, I mean, I could put him in here, but this is, like, putting him away, like, he, this would be, like, Maybe an ongoing series. I don't think I would want him in this because he has his own book going on. So I can't. I don't think he can do a book where he's gonna be gone doing his own on other adventures while doing his adventures. I don't think it would work. It would have to be simply if I chose him. So it's like, nah, we're not gonna choose him. Don't know. So the choices were, and I think Simon Bass. I for some reason believe he died. I don't know if he did die. I don't. I was. I'm. I'm not reading Green Lantern as much. I don't know what happened to him. I think he died or something. I'm not. I'm just sure if I'm wrong about that. I'm sorry. Like I said, I can't. I'm not. I've not read every comic. I don't know everything, but. He might be gone or dead or something. So I, I decided not to use him. And the only left me was Kyle Rayner and Guy Gardner. And I was like, you know, Guy Gardner. Because Guy Gardner is one of the characters who a lot of people... Some people don't like, some people like. Guy Gardner is one of my favorite Green Lanterns. I just... One, I like his original costume design from the 90s. Like, it's his old school GT costume. It's just so good of a costume. I don't know why. It's like, I think it's my favorite Green Lantern costume. It's just so... Something about it I really like. And that's, if you've read, it's like P.J. Tomasi Green Lantern Core book in the beginning where he wrote that. I was great. Like, it's so Guy Gardner can be a cute... Like, he's a guy who can be a little stubborn and, you know, Guy Gardner. If you ever write a book with Guy Gardner, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But he has a specific grade. He can be a little dicky or a little, like, kind of have an attitude or something. But a lot of times he does care. Like, he does care. Like, he does want people to help people. He does want to do things. Like, he does want to protect his family, people he cares about. He can be really kind and the whole thing with him liking ice... It, there's a scene always I always have remember that one of my favorite guy guns scenes I read in comic books is when it was in Justice League uh, uh what was it it was in the Justice League uh, classifies or declassified book like a and they had a 
the first like story they had in it was about uh, the original like kind of like the Justice League International kind of Justice League. Yeah, Keith Griffin and the artist for that Kevin McGarris or whatever his name is uh, to do it, and it's great. It looks like the old Justice League National board comes back with Lord. Everything's great. Has Guy Gardner and Ice, and Guy Gardner that's a really dicky in that. Oh, see, but the point where they go to hell, and then they find Ice, and then they have to walk back. Like, all the, so you can come back alive, but they have to walk all the way back from hell, and they can't like you know turn around because they turn around and see ya. Ice is gone. And him and Fire, who is Ice's best friend, and Guy loves Ice more than anybody else, I think, on the planet at that point. And they were kind of figuring, and they eventually can't help them turn around. And then you see both of them, like, bawling and hugging each other. Like, they are completely... I've never seen Guy that sad about anything. Like, he's bawling in a way. Like, he is in the shot. And I feel like everybody else, you can tell everybody else around them feels sad. It's like, everybody else around them feels sad. It's just one of my favorite comic books. It's so damn good. Uh, it's one of those moments I think makes Guy. Like, Guy is a character who can be sympathetic. I think he'd be, he would be one of the characters on the team. I think he would be a little, like... You know, one of the guys who kind of maybe disagrees or a little like, uh, we don't want to, you know what I mean? Kazuma is Gaiism. There's two people on this team who kind of have that. Um, he's the, he'll probably be the main guy, but I think having a Green Lantern be on the team would be cool. Time kind of Green Lantern. And there's other Green Lantern because there's a whole, like, Galaxy Green Lantern, but I have to pick one of the main ones. That's that guy. And I like guys, so it's like, he's not doing anything, pop him in here. He might be in some Green Lantern book that's out, I don't know. I don't think he, I think that book ended, but maybe he was in. But, yeah, so I'm excited. Guy Gunner's in my Justice League time book. So we have Guy Gunner and Boots of Gold. Who's next? I'm going to go with the characters. There's three characters I'm going to wait for last. Because those are the best. I was thinking of who else to put on the team. I was thinking, next I was thinking, uh, there's two characters particularly I was thinking of. Uh, one, we should have a massive character. And, we, and maybe we could somebody like Superman, like a big heavy hitter. I think Guy Gunner would be the next heavy hitter on the team. Because some of these people are not as heavy, but I think... Interesting enough, these two, and I wanted, I was thinking of, uh, like, it doesn't matter who's like a Superman, like a Superman-like character who would fit in this Justice League team, and I was thinking, who could I get who's like, kind of like Superman, but not Superman, obviously, because he's in the main Justice League, you can't go off and do this. I then I thought of it, Sazam. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, uh, would, would it be Sazam and all the kids and all the family? No, I was just thinking more Billy Benson and Sazam, because that's what I was thinking. I mean, if the other kids and family have to come, they could, but I think that'd be too... That They're like a team of themselves. I was like, why don't we just do it as a thing with, like... Because they don't need Billy Banson to say to Sam. They can say to Sam on their own. So it'd be like, Billy Banson goes off to help with these guys, and then Billy Banson to Sam goes off to help with these guys, and the other ones just stay home and, like, tackle crime and do everything while he's gone. Like, we'll take over while you're gone and do all the stuff. Because they all have the rest of the family... The rest of the kids in the family, like, May and Marvel and stuff, and stuff had powers as well. So they could just do it and do it. It's gone, so Kazam would be gone. And this would be a thing, because uh, he does have his own book right now, so he's the only one. And on this team that I have right now, there's only two characters that have their own book. He's one of them. He's got a new book. And he has time travel, so he can go, and then by the end of the season ends, whenever the season ends or whatever, he would just come back to right before he left. And, yeah, and his time travel, so anything, stuff he, he could do, age, he could not. I don't know. Because he, if he stays as his family the entire time, and he can change. And I also thought it would be interesting because he could change to a kid to do if they needed a kid for some reason. They could change to a kid. Also, if he's his so he's super powerful. All he has to say, well, boom, he, he'd be the powerhouse of the series, I think. Then it would be Guy Gardner and then some of the other people. Uh, those are the two, like, we have three powerhouses and the rest are more easy choices. But I thought Zan would be a cool choice because he definitely likes Superman, the Boy Scout kind of mentality and stuff. And I know it's just like, Shazam now is like, it Billy basically asked Sazam because like back in the original it was kind of like sometimes Billy would trap on Sazam and he felt like oh I'm my own kind of like Sazam was like his own character almost or more or less you know what I mean but this is like yeah I think it's cool and I think it's gonna be great uh Sazam being on the team I thought that would make a good choice he had lightning power all kind of stuff um he has a little bit of magic now he's not the magic guy because I thought yes he does kind of involve a little bit around magic but when we talk about magic he usually Sam does in, is involved with magic, but whenever there's a book like Jesse Doc, we've seen almost every magical character. We've never seen Sam in that book in a Jesse Doc book. So, uh, not counting the tie-ins with Trinity War stuff, doing the Justice League tie-in with Trinity War stuff like that in New Fifty Two. You know what I mean? He's never been like a part of the team. They've never been like all oh, the Oblivion Boss full of magical characters. He's never there because he's technically kind of his own thing. So I don't consider him as a magic user. He does use magic, but 
different than I would say some of the other characters. And funny enough, it kind of the next character on the list is the only one. It's not an interesting one. It's the magic user. I think I'm through the plus for magic because obviously this is just Lee Dark already. So I'm like, I feel like we need have one person who dabbles in magic and can also maybe be a kind of a heavy hitter. And I was like, you know what, this character he's had he's been in the Jet League Dark book. Like if uh, you've seen him in it, but he's not like a member. So I thought he would be perfect. Jason Blood, the demon Atrigan. Because Jason Blood would definitely help. He's like, obviously a nice guy. He likes to he definitely would help and I think he would be like more like the Oh, you have a magic problem, let me figure it out. Cause he's more like a kinda I would say more like a scientist or more like not like a scientist, but more a scientist I would say like to magic. Like he would be like, Oh, this is your problem, I can help you with it. And the demon would be like an extra thing, like, oh, we need extra help, or we need an extra, like, powerhouse guy. Yeah, we have the demon as well. Who would be the most, I'd say, a little bit unruling, but I, I, I like, I always like the demon, and he's always, I think, considered to me, everybody considers the de demon a villain. I'm like, it's weird, because he's such a weird character. Like, he's like almost an anti hero, in my opinion, because he's, he's been good, he's been bad, he's been kind of all over the place. Most of the time in the books, he's been kind of somewhat good. But he's a cool character, and I think he fits uh, as more of the one, I guess, kind of anti-hero in the book. But he's cool. I think the demon would be a cool choice to add to the team. How about, like, an actual magic user, a guy who can transform? Surprisingly enough, I have, uh, do I only have, yeah, I have two guys on this list who can transform, Shazam and Demon. Obviously, the different one turns into, like, a demon beast, and then one transforms into a kid, to a giant man, Superman. But, yeah, I thought having a magic user would be cool, and I thought he'd be cool and be an interesting add to the team. So now we have the last, uh, I think we have, we have Guy, Sazam, Bruce Gold, and Demon. Actually, going to Demon Jason Blood. Who else do we got on the team? We have three more characters. Who are they? Well, I decided, because I saw this one character, and I was like, oh, well, I didn't even think about doing that. That's cool. Having some characters from different times. Like, not from the main time. Like, maybe get a superhero from back in the 40s, or the Western times, or a future superhero. I thought that would be a cool idea. And first one, I we had to pick with Jonah X, because he's been... You, how many times have you seen time travel in just anything? Like, it feels like it's been, like, always. He's always time traveled. It's just a thing. It's like, he always time travels. I don't know what to do with that is, but he's always time traveling, and that's the kind of thing that I need to preface. He's time traveled so many times, it makes... It, he'd be like, oh, yeah, time traveling, I'll come help you with time travel. I've done it a hundred times before. I can help you. It'd be cool to have, like, Jonah X in a book. It'd be part of, like, a team, a Justice League. Because having Jonah being part of Jet League, I think, is kind of cool and fine. Jet itself, so. And that's the one of the only way I think you could get it done. Or unless he got stuck in the future and then he became part of Jet League. I don't I think that's one of the cool ways you can do it done. And then when he's done, he can just go back to the West. Whatever. But, and I really like Jet Hex, and he's done that much anymore. That's why that'd be a cool way to include Jonah Hex. Uh, like, a lot of these characters, some of them are obscure. Like, I said, Jonah Hex kind of is an obscure demon, kind of. The same, I would say, it's not the same as Guy or Booster. But it's like, it's a cool team, and I wanted to throw in. There's one obscure character in this list, so don't get... I tried to pick one obscure character, who was also revolving around time, or something, so that's cool. Then the next two, I decided, okay, we'll do the one that's kind of more interesting. He also has his own book out now, and I was thinking of Batman. I was thinking of... It's a Batman I can put on the team, because Batman kind of is going to help sell the book, no matter what you say. A bat, having a Batman on the team always helps, no matter what Batman you... What it, no matter what Batman it is, it's going to help sell the book. So I was like, we got to pick somebody. I was thinking who. And I was like, oh, wait, this is a time trial book. Let's get Tame McGinnis, Batman Beyond. Because that would be cool. I know he has some books now and probably stuff going on with him. But you could take him from any point in his lifetime. Like, it could be from the future, the past. Uh, after he becomes Batman, obviously, and has some training. But you know what I mean? Like, you could take him from, it could be from the future. So it doesn't affect all the past. It's a point where, like, so it doesn't affect that particular book. It could be before that book or after that book or just a little bit in the future. Anything, and that's how that would work. And then we have Tammy get Batman on the team. He's the only other person I would say who I would say probably, like, maybe could be considered a leader. But I think Booth goes to be the leader because it's time travel, so he makes the perfect sense. But I think it would be cool to have, because it's always cool to have a Batman on the team. And he won't be the same Batman as, like, Bruce Wayne, where he's like, oh, I gotta, like, uh, you know what I mean? Bruce Wayne had that thing where he's like, yeah, I can do this on my own, I don't need help, da -da -da. I can, you know what I mean? The Bruce Wayneism of him, and also how he's, a lot of the time it's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, he has, like, usually files on ways to beat everybody, all his friends, and all kinds of stuff. 
go down the back sometimes. Like, you know what I mean? A guy who's not like that, the kind of interesting thing to him against is kind of an interesting choice. And I thought it'd be cool because we need to have a background on this team. So I thought that'd be interesting. And then we're going to do, uh, so that's six. So we have Demon, Extrigan, Jason Blood, Boots of Gold, Jonah Hex, Guy Gardner, Sazam, uh, Billy Batson, and Batman Beyond Tame McGinnis. So, who is the last member of my team? And I was thinking of time, tr with any other time related to because I could put on the team that I think would be interesting and be kind of interesting, that'd be interesting and cool. And one of the ones I saw that I was like, oh yes, he would be cool, he'd be interesting. Don't know where he fits in timeline and stuff now because I feel like his thing just keeps going up and up. But Commandi is from a Commandi is from an Earth with like it's, it's in DC comic continuity stuff, so he is a character in it. But he's like from the future and it's all gone to shit. And animals are basically taking animal and apes, and he's like one of the only humans who can actually talk and act like a, a regular human. And they were like you, and they treat him like animals. They treat the humans like animals, and animals agree like humans. It's a weird reversal thing, but it's, it's such a great book. The original one with Jack Kirby is amazing, and this is another decent book as well. He's not a time-related superhero, time related hero. He is a superhero. He doesn't really wear a costume or anything. He just wears like his regular attire. But yeah, I think it'd be cool because he knows about like he's a guy who just has like he's just a guy. I think he's more in the reign of like a guy that only powers, but he does know some stuff about time. He's a time related thing. It'd be cool to see him reacting like if he goes back in time, reacting with commodity reacting with all. Going back in time to where stuff's not like shit or stuff like that when the world's fine and seeing how he acts about that or different time period. I think he'd be just a cool character just to have on the team. It'd be some cool, maybe some cool stories with that. Maybe going to his future and having a story there, that'd be kind of cool. Where everybody's like apes and then they have to fight all these ape guys and like oh, Booth going never have to fight these, the city, a city of apes or something. Yeah, there could be some cool shit or whatever, gorillas or whatever. I think it's cool, it leads up with some cool toys, story stuff. So yeah, now uh, a couple things I want to also mention about this team. That's the team. So we have Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis, Sazam, Billy Batson, Jonah Hex, Booster Gold, uh, Guy Gardner, Demon Etchigan, Jason Blood, and Commandi. So is that a weird team? Yes, I think Commandi is the most obscure one on on the team. Both of the other ones are pretty well known. Commandi is the obscure one. I like having a, a wonderful character on the team. I think it just makes it interesting and it shines a light on the character. He probably doesn't get a lot of light. So that was my choice. For Jet Li Doc, ten members, solid, solid team. I think it could make a cool book. Now we're gonna talk about a little about the book. I think the first talk would be about obviously Boots of Gold. Uh, getting. I think it. I think how we're gonna start the the book with start is, um. Either like, um, Superman is talking to Boots of Gold. So Batman's like, we get Boots. Ask Boots of Gold. It's like I need you, I need you. You already do this. You cry three times. It's what. I need you to make a team, a Justice League time, to deal with all the time, the, all these time problems. You go through time and do all this stuff on your own. You need a team. Well, I'm gonna, the Justice League is gonna give you the rights to make, get, make your own team, basically, and pick who you want, and we can give you some suggestions and stuff, and da da da. And obviously, like, Commandi and Jonah Hex and Batman and Beyond are gonna be characters he picks, because he picks them for the future. All those are characters, or it's just, all the book starts off with just, all the books could just start with Guy, Shazam, Booster, and the Demon, and then they go into, uh, throughout the first arc, they, all these other people become, some of these people, maybe like John Hex, like John Hex will join the team, same with maybe Commandi, and then Batman Beyond is one of the, one of the only members he maybe gets them, but they like kind of join out throughout the book, or it's like it's a cool thing, and then eventually throughout this book, if certain characters need to leave for a certain region or something, there's a time travel, you can switch them out. Another thing I thought would be cool with this series, you could eventually, what you could do is, if a member, if a character needs to be switched out for some reason because of a, something going on with that character in another book or something they want to do or do something, swap him out, time travel, take him back to wherever he needs to go, boom, there, you're good to go, he can do his own thing, it doesn't affect anything, but also time travel, so you don't, you don't need to do that, but you could, if you wanted to change members that way, reading time travel to have different members on the team. But this is like, I think, uh, that's probably a cool idea with their core team, the first arc would be them, obviously, Getting the team Batman, telling Booster Gold needs to create a team. I want you to create a team of a Justice League of time, Justice League time to deal with all these time problem issues. Because we have one for magic, we have one for I think Odyssey is space, and we have the regular one that takes the regular stuff and also a lot of the cosmic stuff and the big, the big guns, the big stuff. So I want you to have one to take care of the time stuff. 
with so many time villains, time stuff that could go on. We need you. So yeah, that's what I think. In the first dog, we them getting team together and all that stuff, and then what were the first like who would they fight in the first issue? I don't know. I think they would fight like a uh, Doctor Kronos or the time the guy with the clock kind of design. Oh, another villain who has to do with time. Or could be Vandal Savage. I think that's kind of. I think they will have to do San Vandal Savage at some point. I don't know if that'd be the first one, but that'd be an interesting choice. But yeah, I think that'd be interesting. So they can fight Vandal Savage, uh, Kronos, the guy who usually the Anna fights who has to do with time. And so, yeah, there's a couple of other, other villains who could do time. Cause really, any villain could involve Jesus with time travel. If it involved. You could really have any villain. If they have another guy who knows time travel, they could fight any villain, really, because they could go back in time. And fight Dark Tide at any, at any point. It's just so many options. I think it'd be a fun book. Justice League Time. I, this is a cool book. I actually kind of want this now. Like, if it came out, I would still get it. And I think everybody would enjoy Justice League Time book. I think it'd be a fun book. And I picked a good roster of characters. I think they fit pretty well. Like, Boots of Golden Guy. And today I'm actually wall part of the Justice League. There is no Justice League uh, International or the original book, it was called Justice League First, then Justice League International, and then Justice League America. But the original one was Keith Griffin and stuff with Michael Lord. They were all in that, so they would all have a, maybe a reason to work together, except for maybe to them, because he wouldn't, I don't know how continuity is going nowadays. But I think that'd be a fun book, cool team. So yeah, that's what I got for Justice League Time. Now, how long have we been going? Because I wanted to see if the, the, the way, can if something tell me how long I've been going for? Because that'd be nice. I've been going for live for 41 minutes. So we could do the other one now, I'll stay for another stream. I think we'll do it now, because I would like to make it a little longer. My nose, uh, it's a little runny. It's, it's weird, because every time I try to do a... If I do these where I talk a lot, I don't know why I always get, like, I need to cough, I need to do a thing with the voice. It's a little weird. But yeah, I gotta wait a little, and then we'll get into the next one, what is... I thought two Jet League teams. This is what I originally was going to call the Jet League. Kind of thought this would be a cool idea. But then I was like, no way! Let's do this as its own Jet League. Because I thought the idea for the other one. So, like, why don't we do two Jet League teams in case one wasn't enough to do its own topic? So, it's like, yeah, let's do it. So, we got Justice League. Here we have now. Weird. Justice League Weird. This is kind of like a Doom Patrol Justice League. Well, I decided to pick weird characters. Or maybe not all of them are weird, but definitely more obscure characters. Weird characters and give them on Justice League. Like, hey, we're going to give somebody who we trust, um... To do with, like, a lot of the weird, like, Doom Patrol X kind of things with the, like, Doom Patrol. Some magic related stuff as well, maybe. But, like, more like, uh, the weird, like, stuff like Doom Patrol. Like, that really weird stuff. Or stuff like the Rot, or anything like you could do stuff with the Rot, stuff like from that. Or it's just weird concepts. The Rot Green. It's just uh, weird concepts or weird characters. You could have some of the Doom Patrol villains. Or just weird villains in general you have to deal with. I think it would be interesting. It's called Justice League Weird. Now... Who is your team leader? Who is the team? Who's running the team? I was thinking about who's going to be the team leader for Team Weird. Team Justice League Weird. JLW. Um, this is the character I wanted for... I knew when I made my Justice League book, I wanted this character on the team. But, since I decided we're going to do two teams, I moved him to this team because I thought he would be a great leader for this team. He fits more on this team. If I didn't make it for just the Justice League time book, he would have been on that for sure because I want him on a Justice League book again. Now there's Animal Man. He fits with Jet League Weird, obviously. But he's also, out of all the people on the team, he's the best quality for the leader. He, I think it's the only person on the team who, I think, has been a, a member of the Justice League. He's actually been a member of the Justice League multiple times. He was in Jet League United. Uh, that just happened with uh, the Jet Lemire was writing. With Stargo, like Monster Man, the Green Arrow, Adam Strange, and like Hawkman and stuff. That was a great book he was in throughout that entire run. He was also in the original Justice League, uh, Justice League Europe, the beginning of that, until, like, his family and stuff died, and then he kind of, like, left. But he was a part of that as well, so he's been a part of the Justice League. So, my voice is on crack, so maybe go through this a little quicker. But, like, I, my voice has a thing where I feel like I want to cough. It's probably because I'm talking so much, so I think we'll try to keep this, like, an hour, and then next time we won't quite go over an hour, unless I really do want to talk about it, or we have somebody else. Um, sometimes we will have guests, but... Back to, uh, what was it, Animal Man, I think it was a fresh because he's, and I think he's a good leader. Out of all you on the team, I think he is the best leader of the team. Because it's a short team, but it's a decent team, and I like it. It's weird, I picked some of your characters on this list. One is going to throw everybody in the loop and think, why the fuck did you pick that guy? 
trust me, I have my reasons because I wanted somebody. Since we're doing a book or just like we, I wanted one character who was like obscure. There's technically two characters I would say are really obscure, but one's like holy shit obscure. The other one has you've seen in like he you saw him a little bit in here. He's been he's been in Heroes in Crisis a little bit on some of the stuff. So yeah, he wanted the character who died in Heroes in Crisis. That kind of both that off the lead, but of the. Uh, it could be happened before then, or be in a different point. Whatever the case may be. Um, we have Animal Man, obviously the team lead. I think he deserves He's the best, and I think he could lead. He has a family. He's been a part of Justice League before. I think he's capable of leading. Also, in the last days of Animal Man, he's kind of like the guy who watches the monitor and stuff after he loses his powers, and he still was a member of Justice League and that as well. So he technically, I think, deserves to be a member. And also, you've seen him in the background of Scott Snyder's Justice League books. I'm like, yeah. So he's still there. He helps around with the Justice League. So I think he would be perfect to be on the team. And at all the members, I think he would be the leader. And a book with Animal Man's leading. And a, any book with Animal Man in it gets an A-plus by me. Which is actually in it. Not just about the background character. But next. Look, what character did you want to put in next on this team? I decided we'll go through the main characters first. The characters you might know first. Second, I had to go with the question. He's a character he's not being, really being used. And I think he's another character. Because they would take on weirder things, I think he would fit. His look definitely is weird because he has like the no face thing. It's just a character I think it's cool. Not being used as much. He's being used a little bit more now in comics. Like uh, he was just used in Batman. One of the reasons he was Batman. And he was also been used in uh, some of uh, Brian Michael Bendis' action comics. So he's getting more use. What I like. And I think he's in a little mini series or a series or something. Having a part of this like weird team I thought was cool. He puts on this clay stuff on his face and make his face look like uh, there's nothing there. I think it's really cool. Like, like I said, he's a character that's not being used, I think would be a nice addition to the team. And he's also like a reporter stuff, so he's kind of like a reporter detective type character, so I think that'd be cool to have, like, he, I would say, would be like the Batman of the team. He would be the Batman of the team, not in the looks department, I would say, but more in the way he acts and stuff like that. He definitely feels more like he would be the Batman of the team. Even though there's a couple other characters, he might have more of the look of Batman, but yeah. So that's the first guy. Next, we're going to go with Shard. The Changing Man, the original Shard, the Changing Man, from the original one, like, in the 90s. You know the one we all know, the guy, the original Shard, not the new one, not the cool female one. Uh, you could do the new female Shard. I didn't think about that. Uh, I was actually thinking of the original Shard, because I just like him. But also, it could be the new Shard. I wanted to do the original one, because he had to do it a lot. You know, his books, he wrote his books. Weird. He also do fit a little bit into the magic side. I wanted somebody who had a little bit to do with magic, or something kind of related to magic, and I was like... That I'm thinking of, he doesn't have too much to do with it. A little bit, his stuff is more being with the madness and weird, and it's kind of he's the oddball character, the one who might be the guy kind of maybe fixed out of that shit. But yeah, I thought he'd be a cool addition. If we're talking about weird characters, I think he would be the cool. He's a cool addition. He's a not uh, too obscure of a character, so I think he could walk. You could do the original one, or if you want to do the new one, I prefer the original one, the guy. I the original shot. But um, yeah, I think. Whatever you do, I think it'd be a cool addition. I think he works perfectly, and he's somewhat tied to magic, somewhat, somewhat, very loosely. He was a member of Justice League Dark for a little bit. He was in that a little bit. He's been a part of the Suicide Squad. He's been on. He's been a lot of things, surprisingly enough. So I think he'd be a cool addition to the team. Um, that is. So we have the questions: Shadow Changing Man and Eno Man. Who's next on the list? Uh, we're gonna go by um how popular they are and the ones you probably would know. Next, I decided to put the Creeper on the team because Creeper is a character who fits definitely a weird Justice League team. He would be like the, I think he would be the member of the team who's the more jokey member of the team. There's always somebody like Flash or somebody who makes a lot more jokes than other people. Some people like Batman take it really seriously. There's some people like Batman who will like crack jokes. There's always a joke person on the team who used to crack jokes. That would be him. He'd be the guy who cracks the jokes. He's more like the plastic man type of character on the team or the elongated man. Or well, really the original Jet League International had everybody was like that. But I thought that'd be a cool character to have on the team. He doesn't get used that much. And I want... The, quest, the Creeper's not getting really like, so I thought he's a pure, yeah, he fits like a weird team like this. He'd be like the comic relief member of the team. Awesome. It's actually the two comic relief, maybe. But, that was a cool choice, and he's just a character people do know of, so I thought that'd be cool. That one, you might have seen him on a show called Arrow, and you might have seen him in a comic, because he had a miniseries, Ragman. That character, he's the only character, him and Creeper kind of have similar kind of themes, a little similar, but I think he's another character. He definitely fits in the weird side of things, because he has like, his whole costume's made out of rags, that's, and then he is just a person, and when he puts on these rags, they're like his costume is like a bunch of rags, like looks like they're sewn together. It looks really weird, but it's also kind of cool, and it fits for a book. If you're doing a book called Justice League, weird. I think that makes sense. Works really well. Um, 
So I think Justice League, Ragman is a cool character. He's somewhat known. He was an arrow. He's had his own comics. He's a weirder character. I like him. Him and Creeper do have a somewhat similar costumes. Costumes have some similarities. I think they look the closest together. I guess Animal Man, depending on what costume you're going with, he could have similar. But he's not a character I was cool. Now, the last two characters on the team are the most cool ones, and one of them is kind of might be dead. So, this might, I didn't think about this till afterwards, but Gunfire. Yeah, Gunfire. How do you many people know who Gunfire is? He was in that Deathstroke annual, and then he became, uh, he got bitten by that alien thing, called the Bloodline thing, where this alien came and bit in the back of your neck, like almost alien style. And some people would die, some people would get superpowers, and he's one of the guys who got superpowers. His powers is whenever he touches something, like he can pick up a lamp and then like shoot like a plasma or a blast out of it. He can pick up any item and like shoot a blast out of it. Like, you know, like a, shoot like a plasma or laser or some type of blast out of it. Probably plasma or something and it just shoots at people. Like, kind of like a gun, so he can turn anything into a gun. So I think, I actually like the character. I like his kind of design and I kind of like him. He's one of those characters that probably I didn't like, but I do. So yeah, um, I thought he'd be a cool character. His gun really isn't like a gun gun, so he's not actually like really shooting people. I mean he is, but not like in a way, you're not hitting an actual gun, he's not like a, having a bunch of characters on his team. But that'd be a good idea to do like a mature, like a, uh, maybe I'll do this later, make a mature team. Maybe not a mature Justice League, but like a team with more like darker characters who are not afraid to kill, do all kind of stuff. Maybe we'll do that in a future episode, talk about making a mature, like a dark team, a really, really dark team. I think that'd be cool. But uh... We have Gunfire, like I said, to anything good. He's a cool character. He runs a big company, so he could help fun the team. I don't think he needs to, because the Justice League would be funding the team. Uh, I thought he was cool, because he's a cool character. He's a character I like. I thought he would fit kind of perfectly. And the last character, the most secure character I ever picked to fund the team, is like, the character was probably not even in continuity. The last character I picked was something I wanted to pick somebody. I wanted to pick an oddball. Something that was, even like, I wanted to be Justice League team weird. I wanted to have somebody who's like, Nobody other than like a few people know who this character is. Somebody who's so obscure that makes this team like he makes the Doom Patrol seem normal. I want somebody so weird, so out there, so somebody who had maybe a, a mini season. That's it. And nobody ever heard from him again. The Heckler. Ah, a character who is so weird. Can't really describe him. <laughs> it's uh, Keith Griffin creation that is kind of. It kind of reminds me of Amish Bug. Amish Bug's a weird character, but he's not really like a fighter or anything. He, he, I don't think he could help us much. He'd be like, I just say, I'm here, and that's it. So we eventually, I think, having an, an episode where they had to attack Amish Bug would be kind of cool. But I think uh, Heckler's a cool character, as in, I like his kind of design. I think he's a weird character. He fits, he's just so peculiar and weird. I think he would be like the weird character. Everybody's like, who the fuck is this guy? And then they go back and read some, like, what the fuck is this? Because the book is a little weird. But I kind of have a soft spot for that book. I don't know why. I just like the art. I like the book. It's just one of the books I'm like. It's one of the books that I like. And I think I'm the only one who likes it. So it's like. Other than obviously the guy who created it. Because I think when you create a book. Usually you like it. Obviously you created a book. Usually you have someone. Like what. And my nose is getting really runny today. So I don't know why. My nose is just really runny today. But Heckler is my last choice. For Justice League. Weird. And I'm trying to. My nose is just really. I'm going to have to blow my nose. Oh. It's just my nose. I don't know why. Always, I kind of love. Always, I feel like when I do a podcasting kind of thing, my nose just wants to run. I don't know why. It's like, hey, you want to film a video or do something? Like, if I do the gameplay stuff, it's fine, because I'm not obviously arguing throughout the entire thing, but this is me just talking. But yeah, so the Heckler. So, a team for Justice, for the Justice League Weird team, we have Animal Man, Ragman, the Creeper, Heckler, the Question, Shard, GG Man, and Gunfire. So, we have seven members. The Red. The, the first arc, obviously, would be them getting together. Same as the other one, I think that would have to be kind of explanatory. The other one might not be too much getting the team together. It could kind of do it in an issue or two. But this one, I think you get the team together, you could do it. Okay, here's the team. Airman, Pierre, you get to create your team, here's your team. Or Chris Starter already has a team, and it's like, oh uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a little backstory. But hey, Superman was like, hey, or Batman was like, hey, we need to, you want to create this team, want to make another team, want to pull teams. To, to deal with more things, specific things, so yeah. So who would their first villain be? I think, because I said Animal Man, I just had to be any, like, they could fight the Rot. Or somebody could come into attack, and that'd be kind of cool. And also, you could have, like, Animal Man's family in this as well. Have, like, backup characters with one characters and that. I think that'd be interesting. I think many of these other characters have characters. 
Uh, so I have the changing man. You could do some of his characters from his show. I have other characters related to these guys. They have to deal with stuff like the rod. would be a cool one to talk with. That would be a pretty big one. I don't know if you want to talk with that one first. Maybe something a little smaller and then walk up to the rod. Like the rod be the second arc. That's the big baddie they fight. It's weird because I'm like thinking of weird characters for them to fight. Like who's weird? Condiment King? I mean that's weird. But I'm like how would you make that character with... I would be... I think it would take some of these characters like him. Crazy Quote. Or like Pokemon. Take all these weird characters and make them like deadly as shit. Like take these characters who you think oh. Oh. Oh, it's Pokemon, man. We can take Pokemon. We can take Pokemon, man. And he becomes, like, a big player and can kick butt. And he beats them, like, the first time. And they were like, whoa, we couldn't beat Pokemon, man? What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, what? Okay, what the hell happened to Pokemon, man? And have some of these villains who are obscure. And also kind of weird, a Pokemon, man, and Crazy Crow, man, and, like, uh, I wouldn't say Kai, man, because he's in... Um, Tom King Batman books. Uh, he's not as I would say he, w he would be if he wasn't be using that so much. And Conan King, like characters like that, are clocking some obscure characters. Those are all Batman kind of related ones, but those are like some obscure characters who I think would be cool. Take these obscure characters who probably suck or stupid, and they're kind of you do, definitely said a weird kind of thing, kind of weird, and make them like deadly and shit, and make them actual threats and stuff. That would be actually kind of cool. Maybe for like they get somehow get some type of powers or some weird thing happen. They make a league of the league of weird or something. I guess instead of the league of doom, the league of weird. It's like a league of evil villains. who are kind of on the weird side. I, you could do some cool stuff with this. I think it's really great. Also, uh, what was I gonna say? For Jesse Time, you could do a league of doom too. Like the league of time. I have like a evil time league or something. Kind of like in Legends, what they did with like Vandal. I think was it Vandal Savage? I think was on the team. I feel it was. I know it was Reverse Flash, um, Malcolm Merlin, and, uh, oh, who's the other guy? I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy who could, had magic powers. I think he thought it was a D. Damien Doc. Yeah, Damien Doc. Like, those guys, they had kind of their own team and stuff. Do something like that, but with, like, other characters. Not specifically them. But you have to think we, I think, would be a cool concept. I think it would be a cool team. So I think that's what we're gonna, we just made it to about... An hour for the podcast. I think we're gonna stop. That was cool. Like we're just gonna be talking about my love of comic books and Paul also say I wanted to talk about obviously the Joker thing first, and then I mentioned the new mutant things. But I want to talk about the Joker thing mostly, and then I want to talk about uh, making my own Justice League. I thought it'd be a cool little experiment to talk about. What would I do if I could make my Justice League? I think I'd make one of those. I think Justice League weird would be made more like a short series or maxi series. I was probably like that, then I would continue it, but I think Justly Time would be a more better one. I think that would be more. So, if I had to pick one, I would probably pick that one, and I'd probably change somebody out for Animal Man and just throw him on there. Because I'm like, I would oh, add him on there because he's one of my fake characters. So I'm like, I kind of would want him on there. And then I think that'd be interesting. Cool. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode of Talking Pop Culture. This podcast I'm going to be doing quite a few, at least once a week. If stuff happens, I don't get to it. I don't get to it. I'm sorry, but this is going to be a once a week thing. Cry to once a week, and I'm gonna cry to you eventually. Have some guests, also people, other people on it, so it's not just me. I have uh, my brother Stuart, I might get on it, and my friend Josh, uh, at some point, I might try to get on it, and maybe some other people at some point, if I uh, anybody else. But thank you guys for watching, you guys can always stay epic and see you in the next episode of next week for the next episode. What I don't have any idea what's on. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna do something different, not comic book related next week, so if you don't like comic books, you'll be okay and ready to go. So if you don't like comic books next week, I'm going to do something that isn't comic books. I will be doing a lot of comic book stuff, because I like a lot of comic books, and there's a lot of comic book things I can talk about. So, obviously, that's going to get a big push on my channel, but I will talk about other stuff. I have other ideas, since things I'll talk about. So, thank you guys for watching. You guys can always stay epic. Check out Epic Epic Games. Uh, that's my YouTube channel. You can check out this, but this will go after the stream. I'll go up after the stream. We stream live on Twitch, but then I'll go up on YouTube there. So, you can want to check out that channel. That's my main channel. You can all check out Steve Kids Girl on that channel where I do music and other stuff that isn't gaming or comic book related. Check out those. You guys can always check out my Twitch. Uh, Twitch.com. I think it's Epic Epic Games on Twitch. So check that out. Uh, I stream this and I also been streaming video games. I'm streaming Lego Star Wars for Sega. I've been streaming just that alone because I've been trying to beat it. And also I have this, I have this, 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 this unique setup for that game. So I want to make sure I don't screw it up. Some games are kind of like I have to record it that game only because it's not the easiest thing to record. But thank you guys for watching. You guys can always stay up until the next episode of the podcast. And I don't have an outro or something. Maybe we'll think of an outro and an intro at some point. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And you guys can always oh, just do my regular outro. Stay up until the next episode of the podcast.
Bye.